Sound design. All right, so we're building our own cheap DIY two channel audio analyzer so we can run smart, sat live, system, whatever you want to run. And we already talked about the microphone. So if you haven't decided on your microphone yet, go back and watch those videos. I guess the question that I want to ask you guys is does it really matter if I use this audio interface or this audio interface? Like what features are best? Do we really care? As I mentioned, you should use whatever you have already so you can just get started with practicing right now. Um, really, the only requirement is that it have two balanced inputs. So why do you need two balanced inputs? Um, well, to do a transfer function, a two-channel measurement, what we're going to do is compare the input to the output. So we want to compare what's coming out of our mix console or out of our audio interface in this case with whatever is the device under test. So we were just measuring a speaker in the last video. So we want to compare what we're sending to the speaker with what's actually being received at the microphone, with what's actually happening in the room, okay? So we're going to have a channel here for our reference input. That's what we're going to say. Here's the piano. We're sending the piano out into the room. And then we've got our microphone in the room, and that mi microphone is going to say, okay, I'm getting a piano or I'm getting an airplane, or I'm getting something in between. It's going to show us the contrast between the reference and the measurement. So here's what I recommend everyone do who is just getting started. Get one of these, get a Y cable, so that you know for sure that you are always sending a copy of the exact same thing. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your two-channel audio interface, and you're going to connect the output like that and you're going to take one of those splits and immediately connect it to the input. That is your reference channel. That's why we have over here on the input settings a measurement channel and a reference channel. This loop that I just created, okay, output to input, that's our reference. It can be as simple as that. So it can be really fast to get set up if you just want to measure something quickly like let me just measure the speaker or uh, let me just measure this graphic EQ or let me just measure this console. Set that loop up. That's your reference. Okay, so if you have something like this um, Roland Duo Capture, this is what the split is doing, okay? Here's a warning. If you have one of these kinds of audio interfaces, which I have right over here doing the recording right now, it has this knob here, right? This mix knob from input to peanut butter. What you want to do is make sure that you do not have it set on input because that will create a feedback loop. Um, so when you're doing your measurements, turn off direct monitor and set your mix all the way to peanut butter, okay? All right, so we've got our cheap option, right? Which is $75, $150 audio interface that you can get. And we've got a free option, which is whatever microphone and audio interface you already have around the house right now. Will a $1,000 audio interface give you better signal to noise ratio? Yes. And does it have more features that you can play with? Yes. But again, that's not super important right now. What's important right now is that you have a tool that you can get started with practicing, taking these measurements and interpreting the data. Okay. Um, one platform consideration, if you want to do measurements on the iPad, you can do that. Um, you generally need a battery powered audio interface, which is why a lot of my students like the Roland Duo Capture. One more possibility, if you often use an X32 um, or M32, you already have an audio interface, right? You can just take the output here from the board, connect that to your computer, and you're all set. Now, I do recommend that you eventually get a separate audio interface so that you have a separate measurement unit that's not connected to the board. That way, um, you have something that you know works and you know how it gets connected and it's faster and it doesn't matter what console is there when you show up. But if you own an X30, your own X32 or you're always doing shows with that, why not? You can have a template set up that has all the routing done for you already and you can get up and running really quickly. So if that's your case, I recommend that you watch this video from Donovan Klein and I'll put a link to it below this video. 
All right, so that's the shopping for the audio interface. Um, don't spend too much more time on this. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how to choose which software you should run. Sound design. Yeah.